Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll see the structure of the sporophyte of Fumaria. We have seen the detailed structure of the gametophyte as well as we have discussed what is present on the tip or head of the male or the female branch. That means we have also seen the structure of the male and female reproductive structure. So now let us talk about the sporophyte. The sporophyte grows on the female branch from the zygote. So when fertilization takes place, egg changes into zygote and the zygote gives rise to the sporophyte. This sporophyte has three parts. It has foot, it has seta and a capsule. The foot part, it remains embedded in the venter. Seta is a long thread-like structure and capsule is the swollen part which is seen at the tip. So if we draw the structure, this is how it is going to look. So this lower part which normally remains embedded in the venter, that is the foot part. This long slender structure is the seta. So this is what is the seta. And at the tip, we find that there is a swollen bulb-like structure and this is the capsule. This capsule is a very complex structure where the spore formation would take place and dispersal also is going to take place from here and for which there are some special structures. So we are going to enlarge the structure of the capsule. This capsule has three parts which can be seen from outside. And these are known as apophysis, then there is theca and opercula. But we will also add one more part which is one of the most important structures, not visible from outside but it is present just below this operculum. This operculum is actually the lid which is going to fall off. So here we have drawn a cap like structure. This is the lid which is going to fall off and then the spores will be released. The structure which is going to help in this spore dispersal is known as the peristomium. So this peristomium is not visible from outside but this is a part of the capsule. So let us see all these parts. The lowermost part is the theta, the apophysis. So say this is the seta part, that means this is what we are talking about and then we will have a wide structure like this. So this is the complete capsule part which we want to draw. So this small slender structure which we have drawn here is the seta, that means this top part and from here it is the capsule. The capsule and all the structures which are inside, they are all parenchymatous. There is no other tissue like conducting tissue, xylem, phloem, etc. So, if we draw the outer layer, these are flat cells which make the epithelium part. These are also parenchymatous cells and here we find stomata. So, in this part which is apophysis, the epithelial layer that means the outermost protective layer has stomata. And the inner part is filled with parenchymatous cells. These parenchymatous cells are of two types. The cells which run in the middle of this capsule, they are compactly arranged. Because of this compact arrangement, they appear a little flat and they are the ones which are going to help in conduction of water. As we have seen that bryophytes do not have vascular tissue that is xylem and phloem. So it is the parenchyma only which is going to help in conduction of food and water. And so we call it conducting tissue. But we have to remember that this is not xylem and phloem. This is parenchymatous. That means parenchyma cells only are going to perform this function. So this part which has the stomata is called the apophysis. 
and in apophysis on the outer surface we have these stomata. The inner part we said is having two types of parenchymatous cells. So middle are compact parenchymatous cells which are going to act as the conducting tissue and all the other parenchymatous cells which are filled in this region they are assimilatory. Assimilatory means they are going to help in photosynthesis. They are loosely arranged with intercellular spaces and they will help in food synthesis. So this is the assimilatory tissue and this is also parenchymatous and this is going to help in photosynthesis. So they are photosynthetic. So this is the lowermost part. Now if we go to the upper part then that is called the theca. This was apophysis. Now theca. In theca the outer cells are going to make the same layer that is the epidermis like layer. These are also parenchymatous cells but here stomata are absent or even if they are present, they are very, very few in number. This part, this from here, it is going to be the theca part. So theca normally is differentiated from apophysis because of the absence of stomata. Now if you go inside, inside this theca part, again there are parenchymatous cells. But these parenchymatous cells are with bigger air cavities. And here spore sac is also present. Now how exactly the spore sac? We have to imagine that in the center there is this non-reproductive parenchymatous tissue which is acting as the conducting tissue. So this central part it acts like a sterile part. We call it columella. So here we are calling it conducting tissue but towards the upper side that means in the theca region we will start calling it columella and we also find that this region is slightly swollen as compared to the lower conducting part. So this region is known as the columella region and this is sterile. It is not going to help in reproduction. So this becomes like the central part. Now around the central part there is a sac like structure. So this sac is a structure which is going to be like this. So this sac is going to have two walls. One wall which is just close to this columella part and this wall is made up of a single layer of cells. Here also the inner wall is going to be there. So this is again the single layered wall. And now let us draw this outer part. So this is the sac. So here, if this is the columella, it is surrounded by a cavity and this is the spore sac. This spore sac has, sac has an inner wall which is in contact with the columella and an outer wall. So this gap is actually filled with the spore mother cell. So this is the outer wall. This outer wall can be two to three layer thick. But this is the spore sac. So walls are either single layer if it is the inner wall and the outer wall is two to three layer thick. So this structure is the spore sac. This is the outer wall of the spore sac and this is the inner wall. Outer wall is normally two to three layer. And what is filled inside? Inside are cells and these cells are compactly arranged in the beginning then they would undergo meiosis. So these cells are the spore mother cells and these spore mother cells are diploid. Our sporophyte is a diploid structure because it is formed from the zygote by simple mitotic divisions. No meiosis has taken place yet. Spore mother cells will undergo meiosis to produce haploid spores. And now coming to this area which is outside the spore sac but inside this wall. 
This is also filled with parenchymatous cells. These parenchymatous cells, they are non-assimilatory. That means they would normally not perform photosynthesis. So if we draw these cells, then we need to draw it like this. These cells are parenchymatous and the spore sac is also surrounded by parenchymatous cells. But the outer parenchymatous cells and inner parenchymatous cells, they have these big air cavities. So here, if we draw these few parenchymatous cells outside the spore sac and this is towards the wall, then we find that there are just parenchymatic cords which connect these outer layers with the inner layer. So here we find big air cavities. So in the theca part, what do we find? There is an outer layer which is normally without stomata. The cells are parenchymatous but they are non-assimilatory. That means they do not perform photosynthesis and these were assimilatory so purposefully we have made them green so that we remember that they perform photosynthesis and these ones are non-assimilatory. Now this is the theca part. Now where this theca ends we find a depression. So here there is a depression like this and on this depression is placed the lid that is the opercular. So this is the cap like structure which is present and this is the opercula. Now the area where this opening is there, there is a rim. Rim means if there is a bottle then bottle has a rim on which the lid can be placed or it can be fitted. So here also there is a rim and that rim is known as the diaphragm. So here we will draw those cells which are making this rim and the other would be like this. So this is an opening which we have. Now on this rim is present the peristomium. Now this peristomium is very important. So if we have to draw this peristomium here, if this is this line represents peristomium, again it is made up of cells. Peri is along the periphery and stoma normally is the term used for the opening, mouth like opening. This peristomium has two rows of teeth which are known as peristomial teeth. So this is the peristomium. There are two rows or rather two rings we should be saying. So these rings are an outer ring and an inner ring. Outer ring has 16 teeth and inner ring also has 16 teeth. Outer teeth are long red. So these are long and red. The inner ones, these are long and red. These one are small and transparent. So these ones are long and they are red. The smaller ones are transparent and they are very very tiny. These long ones, so if I draw a long tooth, then it is a structure which is like this. And in this structure, we find that there is oblique lining of hygroscopic tissue. So this is the lining of hygro, sorry, hygroscopic tissue. Now what exactly this is going to do? And where are these teeth present? So here, if we draw this structure, then this is the peristomium and the teeth are going to go in the spore sac. I am going to erase these cells on one side and draw these teeth. This is of the outer ring and this is of the inner ring. So there are two rings. We have to visualize that these teeth are like this. So there are two rings. One is the outer which are longer teeth 
and the inner ring is going to be smaller t. Now this works in a very interesting manner. We said that this is the area where the spore formation would take place. Because the spore mother cells are here, they undergo meiosis to produce spores. Now the job is to let those spores out. That means the dispersal. So what happens is, as the capsule or as the spores mature, it starts to absorb water. Water is absorbed by this hygroscopic tissue. So as this tissue absorbs water, it is present in these teeth. So these teeth get deeper, longer and longer and they start moving inside the spore sac. Then it starts to dehydrate. That means it loses water. And now when it loses water, because of this oblique lining, these teeth, they start to bend like this. So what has happened when water was absorbed, these teeth started growing inside. When it started to dry, these teeth, they bend and they come out like this. So basically, they are taking out those spores from the spore sac. So this is how the dispersal of spores is going to take place. This operculum is going to fall off. So this opening will be widely seen. This falls off as soon as the spores mature. And then these teeth, the teeth which help in dispersal are only the outer 16. The inner ones are very tiny. They don't reach up to the deeper ones. So here what happens is these teeth, they go deeper into the spore sac because of absorption of water. Then they get dehydrated. They bend like this and then they pull that spore out. So this is how the structure is moving. It is going in, then coming out. It is going in and coming out. So that is the job done by these long teeth, which are 16 in number. They are red in color, which is the most important thing that we have to remember. And they have hygroscopic tissue. And the lining of this hygroscopic tissue is oblique, because of which only this bending process is seen in these teeth, which helps in dispersal. So it is a complex structure. But mechanism is very simple and one reason why they need water is for male gametes to swim up to the female gamete and two for this dispersal of seeds or so spores also because of this hygroscopic tissue. So this is the structure of the sporophyte. Now when the spores are formed, the, they would be released. Spores are haploid. That means the spore mother cell, which is a diploid cell, undergoes meiosis and haploid spores are produced. And these spores will now give rise to the gametophyte. So gametophyte gave rise to the sporophyte and the sporophyte produces spores which would give rise to the gametophyte. So this is the structure of the sporophyte in detail. Now in the next part, we'll take up the complete life cycle of